Tillo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, man, if we do go live and you happen to miss it and you want to catch lives, go to twitch.com. The username is at the bottom of the screen. You see it. Don't forget, in the description, we do got merch. I got mine on, and we also got a Patreon. And right behind me is a warning screen, man. You see it, man. Let me, let me get out your way real quick. I, I don't have my green screen today, so I'm going to be down here kind of out the way. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's get to it, man. This is Skyboy. This is the Birmingham gangster who shot at police helicopters. R.A.D. Gang? Oh, okay. Fill it. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me then. The Barton Arms lies on the A34 route to the north of Birmingham. It's a road for which two decades have acted as the unofficial boundary separating the city's two main gangs. The Johnson crew, based in Lozells to the west, and Burger Bar Boys, east of the road in Aston, both took their names from two cafes where black youth congregated in the early 1980s. The two groups were originally part of the same organisation, but legend has it the Burger Bar boys fell out with the Johnson crew in a row over a game of Street Fighter. By the late 1980s, oh, the wait. Johnson crew controlled most of the city's drugs. Did you just say over a game of Street Fighters? The Johnson boys and the Burger Bar they've been beefing over Street Fighter for, for 30, 40 years? However, I didn't know that. I didn't know the beef. St I know it's normally a dumb gang, uh, a dumb reason why gangs beef each other and they split up. But I didn't know it was. You know what? I got nothing to say, man. I've said enough. Let me make sure that's what I heard. But legend has it the Burger Bar boys fell out with the Johnson crew in a row over a game of Street Fighter. Let me not even tweet because <laughs> NBA 2K24, 23, uh, NBA 2K16, back when I was really playing heavily, it get like that. By the late 1980s, the Johnson crew controlled most of the city's drug supply and were prominent in the nightclub security. They were making tens of thousands pounds a week. Killings linked to their escalating drug turf war began in the mid-1990s. Between 1999 and 2005, gun crime in the city rose by 500%. But it was the murders of Charlene Ellis, 18 years old, it and Letitia from... Shakespeare, 17, in January 2003. That's in the drive-by. See, I know a lot about the Burger Boys and the Johnson crew. Which brought Birmingham's gang warfare sharply into national focus. A defining moment in the history of Birmingham. That's how police have described the murders of two innocent teenage girls in a drive-by shooting. A decade okay, after the deaths of Letitia Shakespeare and Charlene Ellis, their mothers are urging young people to think twice about joining gangs. The two women have devoted their lives to warning about the dangers of guns and of being sucked into a life of crime. They were talking to our special correspondent, Peter Wilson. Ambo is about uh, half a minute away now, uh, two ambulances coming. Chilling police helicopter video. Paramedics arrive to find mayhem. Four young girls have been shot. Innocents caught by a hail of machine gun fire. Oh, is this actual footage? I've never seen this. Outside a New Year's party in Aston. Two teenage friends died. 18-year-old Charlene Ellis and 17-year-old Letitia Shakespeare. No. R.I.P. Man, that's one thing I'm gonna say to you, man. The people who choose to be in gangs, man, y'all gotta know what's associated with that. But the civilians that come around the gangsters because they think that's cool, really do something else. Get better friends, because you're putting your life at risk. Your life is at risk when you walk around with a gangster. He has real ops that don't care who he with. They're gonna strike anything. It don't matter. 
Because they wouldn't spare no nobody. You know what I'm saying? So be careful with who you hang around, man. That's that's real. R.I.P. Someone can be that hyped up because you have to be hyped up to go out to buy a Mac 10 machine gun and plan. What do you mean by hyped up? On the streets of Birmingham. That's just evil. Charlene's twin sister Sophie was also shot. Her mother feared that she'd lost them both. The first thing you're thinking that two of them are going to die and you get down, they find that one's, one's passed and one's fighting. It was, it was hard, it was really hard. Four girls had I gone out to imagine. celebrate the new year in 2003. These CCTV pictures taken just an hour before they were killed. The shootings directed the nation's attention onto the spectre of Britain's gangs who were spiralling out of control. Both mothers have since devoted themselves to campaigning against that gun and gang culture. To speak to young people about their choices and how it can affect them by making the wrong choice in being in with the wrong person is overwhelming. When a forensics hub to analyse guns and bullets was set up in Birmingham, the two mothers were guests of honour. The police see the New Year shootings in 2003 as a pivotal moment. I think the event has never gone away from the Birmingham memory. I think this is obviously a very key moment to actually stop and remember what happened on the, that, that very dark day. Um, but certainly for the police, it, it, it is still a, a very big event. Now, while the Burger Bar boys were considered the more ruthless, the Johnson crew were more organised. By then, their numbers were swelled by affiliations with newer gangs propping up, such as the West Bromwich-based Rad Gang in the B70 postcode. Although today's story... No offence, I feel like if you're more ruthless... Like, I could be wrong, but like for the majority, like the way I be seeing the more ruthless gangs, we having less money. Like, I'm talking about on a street level. Not like higher up in like cartel or anything like that. On the street level, if you ruthless, you don't care. You don't, you don't care about no income. You just trying to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Me personally. It's about Birmingham. A very important event occurred in London that will cause a ripple effect of violence across the nation. On the 4th of August 2011, Mark Duggan called Kevin Hutchison Foster, who was somewhat of an arms dealer. You may know his son, who goes by double L's. R.P. Mark. By a gun from him, as he was fearing for his own safety. He went all the way to Leighton to collect it, where he would then get into a minicab to go home. However, Mark Duggan was being followed by police, and he knew. When the minicab reached Ferry Lane, Tottenham officers carried out a hard stop, forcing the minicab to pull over. Duggan got out of the car and was instantly shot twice by Officer V35 killing Mark Duggan and injuring another officer known as W42. Now the officer killing Mark Duggan got out of the car and was instantly shot twice by Officer V35 killing Mark 53. Duggan and injuring another officer known as W42. V53 that officer was overly thirsty. He already had his mind up. He blicked Mark with his officer behind him still in the line of fire. Friendly, you friendly fired in real life. Like, you were over thirsty. Now, the officer claimed he saw Mark holding a gun in his right hand and felt like his life was at risk. Although a gun was found at the scene, it was found seven meters away from the site of the shooting. No DNA evidence was also found on the gun. Officer W42 said, there is no way that Mark Duggan could have thrown the gun from the minicab and me not see it. The other officers also admitted they never saw him throw the gun. So the most likely conclusion is they moved the gun there after Mark was shot dead. The Independent Officer for Police Conduct, aka the IPCC, investigated the shooting and claimed there is no evidence that any officer entered the rear of the minicab. However, a video recording of the aftermath from a witness on the ninth floor of a nearby building shows that the IPCC has no grounds to rule out that possibility. So many inconsistencies and uncertainty in this case, it's no wonder why people believe he was intentionally murdered. Now the jury ruled that his killing was lawful. Mark Duggan's death caused public outrage. Riots broke out which first started in Tottenham but then engulfed the whole of London. Youths were arranged to riot on Blackberry Messenger. Looting and violence followed. Soon it reached other cities such as Birmingham.
Now the Rad Gang and some Johnson crew members responded to the riots in Birmingham by setting Barton's Arm Pub in Aston on fire as his staff cowered the living quarters upstairs to lower riot police to the scene. Then from behind barricades, armed with four guns, the gang fired 12 shots at the police. No officers were hurt in the incident, the shots went above and below them. The gang broke into the pub and stole the cash till. Thankfully, despite some people being asleep inside the pub at the time, the fires were put out without anyone being hurt. Now while escaping, a man known as Tyrone Laidley was caught on camera shooting at a police helicopter. Now on the 7th of June 2012, six men were on trial for their role on what had happened. Like I hear, I hear y'all. I hear y'all. But blinking, it, blinking during a riot, you're definitely going down. It's over. It's over. Birmingham Crown Court heard the police helicopter track the group as they moved across Aston and recorded individuals twice taking aim and shooting at the aircraft. The incident ended when firearm officers attended the scene and arrested three of the men. The other three were linked to the scene through forensic work, mobile phone evidence and police intelligence. Now sentencing, Judge Davis said 30. the intention was to endanger life although 30 no years. physical injury was suffered. That was wholly a matter of luck. Had the police helicopter been struck, the consequences could have been catastrophic. Now Big Caesar, real name Nicholas Francis of Great Bar Birmingham was jailed for 30 years. Told you, the I knew it. The gang member was said to have had a deep hatred towards the police. Fellow Raiders member- You blick at the police, I don't care if you hit or don't, you're gone. <laughs> Jermaine Lewis of Oldbury, West Midlands was sentenced to 23 years. Tyrone Ledley was sentenced to 23 years. Wayne Collins, 20, received an 18 year sentence. Ronaldo Farrell, 20, was sentenced to 18 years while Amirul Rahman, 17, was given 12 years. Now that brings me to the end of this video. Please- Yeah, man, don't do that. You're going to get up out of there, man. See, I'm going to leave a like, comment. I'm gone.